the next question is like y'all y'all know the tweener question is my favorite question of the show because I always get to learn something. So for our tweener series today, Ramsey, you on deck. I'm really excited to learn from you today. What's the difference between speed, quickness, and explosiveness in how it pertains to sports? Oh, and, well, and Mr. Ramsey, can I go before you? Because I know you probably yeah. got this real good answer. And mine's just real basic. I just want to get mine out there. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Ramsey's going to take us to class. No, I'm not, getting real, I'm not getting real technical because a lot of times you get too technical. You remember I told you that, James, the other day. Some of these coaches get so technical when they're talking to people that it go right over the people's head that they're talking to. So I, I always keep it real, real – Real, real simple, man. And I, I use this analogy with my kids all the time. Are you the dump truck or are you the sports car? The dump truck takes forever to get going, but once it's going, he's going. The sports car take off and he's gone immediately. The dump truck has speed at some point, but right here I have explosiveness and acceleration right out the bat, and then I'm going to carry on the speed, right? So I try to get my athletes to be – the sports car. Now, I try to get my linemen to be the dump truck because once they're going, I want them going. But my uh, skill athletes, we're that um, sports car and that explosiveness, that first step. You, I don't know if y'all know Derek Barnett, but one of the things he, he trained with me, one of the things he had when he got to Tennessee was that explosive first step. That means he gets off so quick and he gets to a level of speed that the other people can't match. And still to this day, if you watch the Eagles today, 96 gets off the ball so quick. He's around the tackle before they can get their hands on him. That's why he's getting all these strip sacks and everything. Uh, if you saw my son last week on the tackle, he had him Golden Tate. Explosiveness. From one point, a small area, he exploded through and took all his power with him. That's power and explosiveness right now. Uh, some people have long speed, which means it takes them a minute to get up to their, their maximum speed. But you got sons going to the NFL combine or have been there. Man, that first 5'10", that's where football is played if we're just talking football. It's played in a 10-yard area, really. You know, if, if how explosive am I? How quick can I get there? When that door opens, can I get through that hole before that running back gets through that hole? Derrick Henry is a perfect example. You can tackle Derrick Henry until he gets going. Then them DBs say, hey, man, I made a business decision. I wasn't getting in front of that dude. He was already running 20 yards. So to make it simple, explosiveness and power happen immediately, that we want that immediately. Speed is long term. We're doing 60s, 100s, 200s. Speed is a buildup. Explosive and acceleration is right now, just to put it in simple terms. Coach Steve? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> for, me, for me, for speed, I guess it depends on the sport. If we talk on swimming and running, it's the speed that's covered in a straight line. When you talk maybe football, basketball, and other sports, it's um higher speed and changing directions. You know, like I said, you swimming, you racing, it's really a straight line most of the time or around the track. But yeah. like football, basketball, you be going to the right, then going to the left, changing directions, and still keeping your speed. Quickness is the be, is the ability to react and change body position within the maximum rate of force production. And then explosiveness to me is the individual to exert maximum force in the shortest possible time. I have a question for you guys. But for you guys that work with athletes, I have a question. So I have been observing a lot of people talking about so-and-so and so ran 22 miles per hour, 24. Does that even matter? It would, it would matter from a perspective as a, we're just doing linear speed. But like Coach said, linear speed is straight ahead speed. Uh, speed is multidirectional, though. So if I give a guy – if I get a linebacker, let's say – and he takes a false step, he has to be able to put his foot in the ground, change directions, and come back the other way. You have multi-directional speed, but most, most people don't call it that. We call that agility. We call that quickness. So 
you know, we're talking about the same thing in some aspects. Oh, oh, he showed a lot of quickness there because he he did a jump stop and then he was back the other way. And, you know, they, we say that's quickness. I call that agility, you know. So uh, it depends on who you're talking to and how they're referencing it. But speed is, is multidirectional, not just linear. Track athletes, and like he said, uh, swimmers, they're all about linear speed, one straight line. Let's be real, in the game of football, how many times do you really get to run over 60 yards in a straight line? You're doing some kind of movement. Soccer is the same way. Soccer has some of the quickest people going from one direction to another direction, and they still have to have speed because they outright run sometimes to get there and then have to change directions in, in a heartbeat. So, uh, you know, speed is multidirectional. We need to just remember that. But and you have to have all of them. You can't just have one because uh, you know a kid. I ain't going to mention his name, but he was great linear. He's a running back. We pitch him the ball. He's going to the side. He almost had to come to a complete stop to turn up field. But that's no good for me. I need that guy who can just stick his foot down, like he said, without stopping and turn up field. So. Got it. So listen to this, parents. When you, I know that you guys are like me, observing people talk about the 22 miles per hour, the 20 miles per hour, that only matters in one direction. And it's not the main thing. It's a thing, but not the main thing. Coach T, you got anything you want to add before we go to the next question? No. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are on today, like really, really on. I like the dump trucks, um, sports car analogy. That was, that was pretty dope. So question nine, we are observing more kids transferring from school to school. They're doing it at the youth. They're, they move from youth program to youth program in elementary school and middle school. Um, they're doing it in the high school level. I have actually observed some kids saying they're going to a new school, re respect my decision. Like it's like collegiate offer craziness. Um, how is this transferring affecting our kids? Are there any good reasons to transfer? Um, I'll jump in. Um, every situation is different. So I'm from an area where you know um, if you're good and then you have a child or a relative, so you kind of get the opportunity to exceed, even though you may not be better than the next person. So I wasn't no five, four, three star in my area. So my son was pretty good. He was doing his thing. Then another running back came into the area. His brother was big time in high school. All of a sudden was like, my son was just my son now. This young man was getting all the work without putting in the work. So I saw the favoritism coming. So I said, we're going to move. But I said, where we're moving to now. It's uh. We're not going to be in Harrisburg no more. It's going to be out here with the other people. So now you're going to have to show that you can work. It ain't going to be because you're big or fast. You're going to have to prove that you deserve to be on the field. And I think for him, that helped him. Because if I'd have stayed in my area where I grew up, I don't think he would have learned a lot of different things. He just would have been good. You know, never went nowhere. Else. So I think moving caused all the favoritism and saw how hurt he was. Oh, the other people, uh, I went into the white area. So I thought that was a better benefit for him because now you really have to work because, you know, they're not going to give you anything, you know. So in that aspect, I saw him transition, you know, from being just a good running back to being a better running back slash fullback because he wasn't going to be a running back now. He's going to be a fullback. So the transfer was great because he got to learn multiple things. You know, when you play Little League, you know, if you're fast, it's easy just to keep tossing you the ball and you outrun everybody. But to learn to run between the tackles and inside and learn how to do the shift and everything, that takes a skill, and they got to teach you that. He was learning that. He wasn't learning that. He would just get the ball. As soon as you get it, run outside and go. Mm -hmm. Out here, they was like, hey, if you don't run between these guards and tackles, you won't run the ball. That helped out. You know, so again, transferring – I usually didn't agree with it, but sometimes you have to because, again, like I'm from Harrisburg, so I mean, when my kids go to Harrisburg, but just because I went to Harrisburg and succeeded, don't mean they're going to go and succeed. They may have to go somewhere else. So, again, you got to do what's best for your child, you know, at the end of the day. 
sometimes we get caught up in, I want my child to do this and do that. What does the child want to do? You know what I mean? And that's the big question. Let the child decide sometimes. As a parent, you still got the final say, but see how the child feels. Because also, because you want to transfer, they may not adapt well when they transfer. It could hurt them. So it's different avenues you have to look at. But he was at a young age where he wasn't in his ways yet, so he was okay with moving and learning new things. But had he been older, it might have been a little bit different. All my friends is here. I want to stay here. You know, he wasn't at the age yet. So I agree with it to, on that level. Now, when it comes to high school, I figure where you start to where you stay. Unless, again, some controversy or something that's going to endanger your child, then get them out of that situation. But if you're just transferring to win or to try to get exposure, again, I mean, it may not happen for you because they already got good players. You're trying to go in and get exposure. If it's not already there, transferring there, you may go from starting to playing behind somebody. So everything's a little different. It all depends on your area and, and your child and as a parent in my, in my aspect. I'm going to say I was really intentional. And y'all know I do my research. So um, we never transferred, but it was because I was intentional on the front end. Even with Little League, at the time when we moved to the Nashville area to play Little League, I was like, it wasn't about football. It was where can my child go where he is going to see educated black men who love their families? Because I was going through a divorce. And I knew that his dad was moving to another state and he and my girls were going to need to see that. And so we did our research. I, I can't remember the number of people that I actually talked to, but UNA is the program that kept coming up. I didn't realize that we weren't, that there were zones for Little League until I went to UNA to sign up and they were like, well, you're not zoned for here. You're zoned for Woodbine. So we went to get a waiver and we played at that same park every single year but it was very intentional because i needed them to see something and that's i met some wonderful people who 15 years later 20 years later they're still the same people that my kids look up to they're still the same people that interact with us and even when we were switching um we did public school up until middle school and then in middle school this is where the transition happened um we went to private school and the reason that we went to private school, honestly, is because when my oldest daughter hit middle school, her school teacher said she's too, she's too intelligent to go to school here. She's going to be bored. She won't be challenged academically, and she's going to become a discipline problem. And that really scared me. And so based on her teacher, Ms. Jones, consistently telling me I needed to do something different. Then I did, did the research and we went to a, a private school. But Ramsey will tell you at our private school, we knew that we, you know, his, his kids paved the way for my kids. We were the, the first, we were the effort, we were the diversity effort, like schools saying we're going to, we're going to really be welcoming to black kids. So a lot of times they were the only black kids in their class. And so the athletics was a part, but the academics and the opportunity really mattered a lot. So we didn't end up having to transfer because I did my work on the front end, if that makes sense. I agree with both of you. Um, I did my research for Paris as well um, at the little league level, middle school, as well as high school. But then we had the transfer. And when I say we, is because I was a part of that process with Paris because it was his decision to transfer from one high school to another. And it wasn't my plan. <laughs> it was, it was, I really do believe it was God's plan. But again, like Coach Parsons said, I, I follow Paris's lead because that's what he wanted to do. And it wasn't my decision. Um, but we had to transfer because his previous school, which was a private Catholic school, would not allow him to graduate early, even having completed all the graduation requirements, they wanted him to stay there for entire four year experience and not leave a semester early to enroll early at Ohio State. So he made the decision to transfer and I was there to su support that transfer. And it wasn't a fun experience for our family. We had a lot of sleepless nights about it. 
just making sure he was making the best decision for him. And then me coming along supporting that decision because he had been in private school from the time he was five years old. And here, here he is 17 years old saying he wants to transfer. And all I saw was my tuition dollars. <laughs> just oh, this oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so, but I wanted to support his vision, his dream. And, and now looking back, that was the best decision that our family has made. But it really does depend on the situation. Even when you think you checked every box, I'm just like you. I checked every box. I did all my research. I did everything. So when Paris came, like, hey, I want to graduate early. Like, wait, wait, wait. That wasn't in my plan. <laughs> so I agree. So even when you do everything right, sometimes you do have to deviate from the plan that you think you should follow. Sure. True, it's very true. Ramsey, thoughts? Uh, I agree with all of you. It, it has to be an individual decision uh, amongst the family, you know, because everybody's family situation is different and you have different reasons why you're moving. Um, as far as youth ball, you know me, man. I, I, I've coached ball from every level and I see a lot of parents who take their kids to the, to the program that's the hottest. And uh, that kind of bugs me because I'm like, man, you're taking him over here and you'll rather him be on the bench on a winning team than to be over here where he can get reps and get better on a team that maybe is not as good. That kind of bugs me. We even have high schoolers right now. It's a school close to where I live. When they're a pretty good team, they make the playoffs. They're always going to the championship game. And they have kids who could be studs at other schools just sitting on the bench and then wondering why they're not getting recruited. Mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, man, you know, what I, I said, uh, why don't you transfer to such and such school? I said, they suck. I said, yeah, but if they had your son as the quarterback, the quarterback could go to receiver where he should be, and now we might have something going on. But the coach over there is playing the kids he have in the position that he need them in because he don't have, you know, and his kid's thrown for that school that he won't go to. So, but uh, now he's a senior and decide I'm going to go there. Well, now the kid's locked in that quarterback position, and he's like, I ain't just going to give it to you. So, you know, I, I don't like when they do it with youth ball and middle school ball. But with that being said, I actually moved my son. I was on the coaching staff at a high school up here, and I moved my son because I was substituting on my days off. And uh, I moved him for academics, sort of like James Zetta. He was at a high school, and I went in to substitute, and I had 35 kids in the class, and some of them didn't even have a seat. And I was like, is this how most of the classes are? And like, yeah, you know, they're sitting on the little heat radiator thing in the back. And I'm like, man, I got to move my kid from here, man. I, I, he got a shot. You know, he's already starting varsity uh, quarterback. And as a ninth grader, I said, he's got a shot. And uh, that's when we made the move to a private school where they, I felt like they pushed academics more so because – than just sports. I felt like sports was going to take care of themselves with my boys. So uh, we were looking for that academic fit so that I, I'll make sure they were ready for college. I went to college, man. I had to take so many developmental remedial classes when I first got there. I had like a whole year, maybe a year and a half that just didn't even count. I was just taking it so it made it harder on me. So I didn't want to have the same thing happen with my boys. So I moved them to a private school. Uh, my youngest, Jalen, he moved to a couple schools because he was in middle school. He was the tag along at the time. So he went to middle school while my oldest one was in uh, high school. But when, he, when uh, it was time for him to go to high school, my oldest was graduating, and Jalen didn't fit that high school. He would have been like the, uh, the Fresh Prince. If y'all seen that, he would have been <laughs> doing everything wrong, you know, and just, just he didn't fit. So I had to try to find the school that fit him like we found the school that fit my oldest one. So we moved him. Uh, he got hurt. It was, I'm going to tell you right now, like Monica said, I, I sit back now and look at that injury he had after his freshman year as a blessing because we wanted to move him and we didn't have to worry about him sitting out because the injury made him sit out. It just made it so much less stress for our whole family. And then the next year he came back and he was at the school that fit him the best and uh, the rest of history. So, you know, you have to really look at uh, the overall situation, I would never tell somebody, oh, you shouldn't graduate. I mean, you shouldn't transfer. You shouldn't do this. But just look at the whole situation and make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. So at the end of the day, you have nobody else to blame. You guys make me think. So I think we're all in alignment 
um, in terms of academics, definitely being reason. But I have a friend here locally, and he had to move his kid because of the coach. Um, the, the coach was just not interested in everybody getting recruited. He was interested in his son getting recruited. And the my friends had some words with the coaches um, because, you know, college coaches – would call and say, hey, we went to the school, but, you know, they wouldn't let us see your son, but we saw so-and-so, we saw the coach's son. And it really ended up being very public um, in the way that the, the coach at the time, because he's not the coach there anymore, but the coach at the time, like, had a, a public mental meltdown, and they moved him to a new school. And it was crazy because they needed to get, like, a waiver. And this is the one of the few times where I've seen a coach say no. I will not allow you to actually go to the school that you want to go to. So I, I think that sometimes a coaching staff is really, really, really not the right fit for a kid. And you do have to move them if the coach is not the right fit. My friend's son ended up um, finding the school. They, they actually had to move to the zone of the school that he wanted to go to. Um, and he went to school there, graduated. He's going he's gonna to be playing in college. He did get a scholarship, but it was hard. And they moved because just the friction with the parents and the coach. And, and I don't think that parents are aware sometimes of how coaches um, come across. But definitely another reason that I can see people transferring is it just really truly is not a good fit from a coaching family relationship perspective.